The state Labor leader says she's open to the idea of unions having a vote on who leads the party in the parliament. A year and a half on from its worst election loss, Labor is planning significant reforms as it tries to claw back ground on the Newman government. Eighteen months ago, Labor was at its lowest ebb, reduced to a mere seven seats. Party bosses know it's a long way back. We have to come up with good, sound policies that the people of Queensland believe will lead them better into the, uh, the rest of this century. And even if some former MPs attempt to come back, the ALP needs more than 70 new candidates. We have to look at uh, what re further reforms need to take place within the party in terms of candidate selection, in terms of uh, leadership selection. To select the parliamentary leader in future, the president wants unions to have a vote. I don't have a problem with including the unions. The Labor Party is a broad church. The current leader is realistic about the opposition's prospects. I always said it would be like climbing Mount Everest. What I can say now after 18 months, we've reached base camp. As Labor takes stock midway through the term, community groups are assessing the LNP's performance in government. Environmentalists lament the rollback of vegetation management laws. It was a black day for Queensland when they axed some of the tree clearing laws, but their fisheries policies and their efforts to tackle pollution have brought benefits to the reef. They're also nervous that the new federal government has given the state more environmental assessment control. On social matters, public housing advocates were distressed by state funding cuts to the tenant advisory service. But generally, the Council of Social Service is satisfied. We believe that there will be better outcomes in the longer term for people experiencing poverty and disadvantage. And, and we're seeing that the government's got a strong agenda that way, which we appreciate. Ready now for the second half of the parliamentary term. Chris O'Brien, ABC News, Brisbane.